Two local restaurants just racked up some really big numbers. Now, the problem is this is dirty dining night, and those numbers, well, they are demerits. That's right. 13 Chief Investigator Darcy Spears shows us customers are paying attention. The foot traffic was plentiful at Oishi on Sahara and Tanea, but the staff couldn't keep up. You had one on the floor there oh, really? for two hours. Oh, really? I mean, it took us an hour to get a roll. Just inside, groups of people waiting to be seated for lunch recognized why we were there. This is dirty dining, yeah. And began debating whether it was safe to stay. Oh. So they just recently fixed all their violations, so right now it's an A. Oishi got its A back on June. June 28th. It was shut down for four days after the sushi bar was hit by the health district with 47 demerits. To work in the kitchen industry, that's alarming 47 is an alarming number for sure. For inspectors alarming. to shut the sushi bar down based on demerits alone, but it also had the imminent health hazard of no hot water. The long wait to be seated gave this group time to think about all that. It should be zero demerits and eventually leave to eat elsewhere. Manager Michael Yoon agreed to talk to us as long as we didn't show his face. We're here because of the closure you guys experienced mm -hmm. from the health district, along with 47 demerits, which is a lot. Yes. What was, do you want people to hear from you guys about why that happened? So basically what happened was that day the hot water was not working for us. That explains the imminent health hazard, but not the other violations. One food handler used a dirty towel to wipe the cutting board and his hands. Another touched his smartwatch, then continued to make a customer's sushi roll. And we also have some employment of uh, using their cell phone, especially their smartwatches which that's a violation for the COVID stuff like that. Uh, well, no, I mean, that's a violation, violation of health code. Health you health don't health. touch your smartwatch and then touch someone's yeah, exactly. food. So we had that problem going on. They also had problems with unsafe food temperatures, uncovered food in the sushi case underneath a condenser line, and uncovered scallops in the make table under dirty fans. Raw beef was directly on top of raw fish in the sushi case. Washed and cut produce was on a dirty shelf in the make table. Utensils were stored in dirty, lukewarm water. And seaweed paper was stored in dirty containers that were heavily soiled with a buildup of old food and grease. There was one thing that kind of jumped out at me. A food handler with greasy gloves was touching handles, dirty equipment, and other surfaces, then began picking unidentifiable black particles out of rice. That I did not know. Honestly, if that's what they saw, that's what they saw. But I mean, like we make mistakes and we're willing to fix it and we are going to fix it and we'll make everything right. Inspectors also noted heavily soiled hand sinks and a multitude of flies cruising in and out of the sushi bar. A lot of conditions were, were dirty and greasy, and they talked about cutting boards that didn't appear to have been cleaned, that were noticeably dirty. Uh, those those problems was only for that day. It wasn't anything in the past. Um, I guess that day the, the chefs and everybody were being lazy. The health code violations suggest problems far greater than just one day. Equipment interiors, exteriors, and handles were sticky and heavily soiled with dust and old food, as were cabinets, shelves, walls, and floors. Floor sinks were dirty and clogged, and there was a pungent odor coming from the entry area of the sushi bar. Inspectors made a specific note about chefs failing to separate utensils, cutting boards, and prep areas for raw versus ready to eat sushi rolls, which is important in preventing cross-contamination. Again, we retrained the, the servers, all the chefs, all the busters. We retrained them for the four days. I mean, so we're good right now. Yoon says being shut down for four days over a busy weekend was a hit to Oishi's bottom line. I mean, that's where the money is for the most restaurants, so it did make us a big hit. So we learned our lesson. We definitely learned our lesson. And we're trying to put it in the past and go right for the future. Dirty Dining repeat offender Waro on Decatur and Twain was shut down June 22nd with 50 demerits. Waro was using its front counter as an unpermitted buffet with lots of food at unsafe temperatures. Items in the cooler were uncovered and subject to potential contamination. There was mold in the ice machine. Flies in the facility and excessively dirty slicer and rice cookers were stored as clean. Four cases of raw brisket left on the floor to thaw for approximately 12 hours had to be thrown out. That's a substantial waste of beef at a time when most restaurants can hardly afford to lose inventory amid rising meat prices. 
Poirot also had excessively dirty scoops touching dry food and excessive old food, dirtied equipment, container lids and walls. The restaurant was closed due to several uncontrolled risk factors for foodborne illness, but it was back to a three demerit A grade on June 30th. The owner had no comment. The final closure came at repeat offender JJ Noodle Cafe on Spring Mountain in Lindell. It was shut down June 25th for failing reinspection from a previous C grade. Repeat violations included improperly cooled beef at an unsafe temperature that had to be thrown out. All cooler door handles were excessively dirty, causing potential for cross-contamination. Multiple dirty bowls sat in clean storage, and the deep fryer cabinet and floors behind equipment were heavily soiled with grease and old food. JJ's owner had attended a supervisory conference on June 10th with the health district, but still failed reinspection, which meant she was required to stay closed until a food safety consultant was hired and trained staff. Through that food safety consultant, the owner declined comment. JJ Noodle Cafe reopened June 30th with a zero demerit A grade. Darcy Spears, 13 Investigates.